live. This is News 12 and NBC 26. News at 6 o'clock. On your side. 14 people in Richmond County custody after a gang investigation spanning two years. Two more are still on the run, one being transferred here from across the country. Good evening, I'm Richard Rogers. And I'm Laura Warren. Today, Sheriff Richard Roundtree announced the investigation connected the gang known as LOE, or Loyalty Over Everything, to robberies, killings, and drug activity. Of the 17 people listed in that indictment, two are still at large. One being transferred is active duty military. Sheriff Richard Roundtree says they're still tracking more than 90 gangs around the county. But as Lindsay Tooman tells us, today's announcement is giving a lot of insight into the LOE gang. It's what Sheriff Roundtree calls one of the most violent gangs in the county, and it has a long history in Augusta. The LOE gang, formerly known as the Shirley Avenue Boys, started in Augusta in the 1980s. They expanded beyond their street, taking in groups from around the area, including Richmond Villas. By the time gangs don't just um, disintegrate themselves, sometimes they merge in other gangs. This gang is affiliated with the Bloods. They like to use the number 32 and use hand signs, including the letter L. The sheriff says the LOEs are known for being especially violent. A particular gang were being linked to a lot of street robbers to a lot of aggravated assaults, a lot of the shootings. Um, a large number of our, our shooting cases were being tied back to this gang. Especially in the Olive Road area. The indictment says they have at least two rival gangs nearby, the Bottom Boys and the Bolt Drive Alley Boys. Just three gangs of the 90 deputies are investigating. And anytime we get three or four people engaged in criminal activity, especially violence in Richmond County, that organize themselves, they're considered a gang in the state of Richmond, I mean, state of Georgia. It's a problem the sheriff has been working on since since he took office. To not only come up with a strategy to arrest, uh, but to prosecute gang, man, gang members that will totally destroy its structure. And with this two-year investigation and 17 facing charges, he hopes this is going to help at least take the LOEs off the map. That we're going to throw every resource we have available, not only to arrest and prosecute, but to eradicate your gang's activities in Richmond County. Now the sheriff says they will probably wind up arresting more than just these 17. So Lindsay, the sheriff says it's been a violent gang. How do they start identifying these people? Well, the sheriff says there were a lot of shootings and all of those shootings kept getting tied back to this gang. They were destroying a lot of attention to themselves with violent crimes. And also a lot of those crimes were coming up on Facebook. Interesting way to track the cr uh, criminal activity there, Lindsay. Thank you. This indictment is shedding a lot of light on who some of these people are. One is a former deputy jailer at the Richmond County Detention Center. Investigators say Gregory Mims was fired back in December after they discovered him giving tobacco to an inmate. We are still working to learn when the last three people indicted will be brought to Richmond County to face charges. Investigators say one of those, T. Angel McFadden, is active duty military, an E3 in the Navy who has gotten a couple of decorations, currently stationed in California. They're working to bring her back here. Now, no court appearances have been scheduled quite yet for all these people, but it's pretty wild if you think about, you know, for years we were like, is there a gang problem? Sheriff Roundtree is really addressing this. So right. A lot of takedowns. Up to 90 that they're tracking all the time. So early morning, a string of arrest here, and we're going to keep you updated on the air and on social media as the, these things still develop. Hard to believe 90 gangs they're tracking. Well, going into this winter season, the forecast called for warmer than normal temperatures. So far, so good. Look at today's high temperatures, 81 degrees here in Augusta, another record high for the Garden City. That's two in a row, and four of the last six days, we've managed a record high temperature. Look at those numbers. The last time we had a week of weather that warm was the first week of November. Hour-by-hour hour forecast shows temperatures eventually falling down to the 50s as we head toward the midnight hour, but much cooler weather is on the way and also increased rain chances in the seven-day forecast. Details straight ahead. Another big story today, a high-ranking officer at Fort Gordon admits in federal court to downloading child pornography on his home computer over the course of two months. Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Hurwitz entered a guilty plea after a task force found hundreds of files on his computer. Brooks Honor live outside the federal courthouse for us with the latest. 
Well, federal court does not allow cameras inside, but let me set the scene for you. Hurwitz was brought into the courtroom around 2 p.m. He was wearing a bright orange jumpsuit with his hands cuffed behind his back. He was a bit fidgety, but he openly admitted to possessing child pornography. And if you take a look at your screen, you can get a glimpse of Hurwitz being transported from this courthouse back into custody. And during the hearing, Hurwitz changed his plea to guilty on one count of child possession of child pornography. Now, the judge called the lead investigator to the stand earlier as well. He said during a search of Hurwitz's home, they recovered 18 electronic devices. And of those 18, five of them contained child porn. And one hard drive had a, quote, significant amount of child pornography. Investigators found over 600 images along with several files containing child pornography. Hurwitz told investigators he had been downloading porn for about two months. Pretty shocking stuff with an officer out at Fort Gordon. What is next uh, in this case? Well, date hasn't yet been set for sentencing, but what he's facing is up to 20 years in prison. He could be fined up to $250,000. He also will be registered as a sex offender, and until he gets sentenced, he's still active duty military. But during most of this investigation, Hurwitz openly admitted to downloading and viewing that pornography, and at the very end, the judge started questioning his decision about changing his guilty plea, and he did hesitate before he responded, yes, Your Honor. All right, a little too late at that point. Thanks for that update for us from the federal courthouse, Brooke. That investigation started last July when the Georgia Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force say they tracked more than 100 files downloaded on Hurwitz's IP address in a two-day span. He was arrested in September when investigators say he admitted to looking at child porn, indicating the youngest kids he had viewed to be the size of a toddler. Later that month, a judge ordered Hurwitz to stay in jail until his trial as court documents cite him as a danger to children in the community. He was then indicted October 4th. A South Carolina state representative is granted bond after being accused of domestic violence of a higher ag aggravated nature. Representative Chris Corley was arraigned today on those charges. Although he was suspended from his house seat, Corley's attorney says he is not resigning. He has not, let me say this to you again, has not resigned his seat. Uh, someone pointed that to me, and uh, I want to clarify that right now for you. Corley's bond set at $50,000. He is not allowed to have contact with his wife, possess any weapons, or leave the state except for work in Georgia. The attorney general, solicitor, and Corley's attorneys still have yet to set a trial date. If you're a in a domestic violence situation, you think you might be in danger, first of all, call 911, but physical, psychological, and sexual abuse are all types of domestic violence. Head over to our websites for a list of places you can go, hotlines you can call, and resources for help. Developing tonight, Augusta District Attorney Ashley Wright will soon be Judge Ashley Wright. Governor Nathan Deal just announcing Wright will take the place of retiring Judge David Roper. Now that'll take effect when she's sworn in, but a date for that has not been set quite yet. Richmond County School Leaders giving us our first look at what the new K-8 through school along Jimmy Dias Parkway will look like. It will have room for at least 800 students. That new school will help lower the student populations at both Sue Reynolds Elementary and Langford Middle. Board members approved allowing the construction company to start site work during their meeting last night. The plan is to have it open in time for the 2018-2019 school year. 42 new students starting at Payne College this semester, hoping they'll be able to graduate with a degree from an accredited school. They held their 135th spring convocation today. The school is waiting on the outcome of a lawsuit to find out if they can keep their accreditation with SACS. As Brittany McCoy reports, the mood seemed pretty upbeat today, despite the school's uncertain future. Any college is fully accredited, but on probation. Payne's definition of fully accredited doesn't exactly match SACS. SACS pulled their accreditation, Payne appealed that decision, they said their decision stands, and then Payne filed a lawsuit. So now that lawsuit is buying them some time. But students are keeping the same attitude towards their accreditation issues. We continue to motivate each other, um, keep ourselves busy, focus on our books, and realize that Payne College is here to stay. But the school is also dealing with a few sanctions. Seven of those sanctions were removed. 
leaving three that all have to do with uh, finances, stability of the institution. Keeping the students motivated is another task. President Sullivan says they spoke about adding new programs after they become reaffirmed. So Terrence Rogers says he's embracing what they have. We still have everything we need. We may be on probation, but we'll get through this, and that's what Lions do. We always overcome everything that we go through. Overcoming the loss of students and some faculty. <laughs> Sarah Avera says they haven't lost any pride. In order to be a group of lions, you got to have pride. But one thing about pain is we're not the only school going through it. And we won't be the last school to go through it, but we'll be one of the first ones to get through it. And right now, Payne has about 400 students, including the 42 new students that start this semester. Now, if they lose the lawsuit, President Sullivan says they have another plan in place. They are working with another accrediting agency, Tracks, to, to pursue accreditation through them. All right, long road. Thanks for that, Brittany. A former local investigator taking part in the national spotlight. We give you a behind-the-scenes look at a new reality series coming on soon, featuring a former Richmond County investigator.